Gone with the Wind was one of the best films made in Hollywood and a seminal work of American and world cinema. Based on the 1936 novel by Margaret Mitchell, this film remains a classic and is still watched by film lovers today. Sadly, every cast member has now died. Their lives and careers should be an inspiration to us all. Join Facts First as we talk about the life and legacy of each cast member. Casting the Film The casting of Gone with the Wind was one of the biggest challenges of making it. This was especially the case when it came to casting the two lead roles. It took two years to find the right cast members. The film's producer, David Oselznick, knew from the beginning that Clark Gable was the perfect choice for Red Butler. But at the time, Hollywood was working under the studio system, and actors were contractually obligated to only work with one studio. That is, unless the studio was willing to loan them out, which MGM wasn't doing. They had to wait two years just for Gable to be freed from such obligations, so he joined the cast. It was perhaps a bigger challenge to onboard Vivian Lee, who played Scarlett O'Hara. That's because it took seemingly forever to find the perfect actress to take on the role. There were 31 women who auditioned for it, many of them famous stars, others hopeful aspirants. Once again, David Oselznick knew the perfect actress was Vivian Lee. She was famous in England but wasn't known much in Hollywood yet. He had to convince director Alexander Korda to lend out Vivian Lee as she was under contract to work with him. Eventually, she was added to the cast. Clark Gable William Clark Gable was born February 1, 1901 in Cadiz, Ohio. He began his acting career in the 1920s. While still in his teens, he was working at a tire company, but after watching a stage play on a day off, he decided acting was what he wanted to do. Early on, he established himself as not only a leading man, but also a versatile actor. Most of his career in the 20s included roles as an extra and bit parts, most of which went uncredited. But his luck changed as the 30s approached. He appeared in hit films including Laughing Sinners, A Free Soul, Night Nurse, Sporting Blood, and It Happened One Night. By the time he was cast and Gone with the Wind, he was perhaps the biggest star in Hollywood. His final film was The Misfits, released in 1961. It was a western directed by John Huston and written by Arthur Miller. Even at the final stage of his career, he was acting in great films, and he always proved he was great in drama, westerns, thrillers, and comedies, a rare feat. The film was released the year after he died. He died November 16, 1960, from coronary thrombosis. He was 59. Vivian Lee Vivian Lee was born November 5, 1913, in Darjeeling, British India. When she was in her early teens, she moved back to the UK with her mother and stepfather. Upon her return, her friends convinced her to be an extra in a film that was under production. She played a schoolgirl in the comedy Things Are Looking Up. While the role was minor, her enthusiasm at being in a film was a major contributor to her deciding what she wanted to do in her life. Throughout the 1930s, she managed to snag roles in big British films, including Fire Over England, A Yank at Oxford, and Wuthering Heights. She rapidly was becoming a star in England, but was still largely unknown in the U.S. At that time, the U.S. was dominating the film industry and entering the golden age of Hollywood. When she was noticed by David O. Selznick and was cast in Gone with the Wind, she became an international star. She continued to act in both American and British films throughout her career, and her other big hit was when she played Blanche in A Streetcar Named Desire. She continued to act until she passed away. Her final film was the 1965 film Ship of Fools, in which she had the lead role among a great ensemble cast. She died July 7, 1967, of chronic tuberculosis. She was 53. Olivia de Havilland Olivia de Havilland was one of the last Gone with the Wind cast members to die, and she lived a long and fruitful life. She was born July 1, 1916, in Tokyo. Her mother Lillian was a stage actress who performed in England where the family lived, though their origins were from Normandy. As a young lady, she learned to have an appreciation for the arts, and she studied acting, music, singing, elocution, and much more. Her first film was the 1935 film A Midsummer Night's Dream. The film was good enough for her to get more roles. But her movie stardom came in 1939 when she appeared in a slew of films that launched her to star status. These included Dodge City and, of course, Gone with the Wind. Not only was her role as Melanie rewarding for the audience, but it became one of her favorites. As with Clark Gable and Vivian Lee, producer David O. Selznick specifically wanted Olivia to play the role, which she eventually won. While her career had its ups and downs, she managed to appear in a series of hit films in the U.S., the U.K., and other parts of Europe. Her final role was in a 1988 TV movie called The Woman He Loved. 
After this TV movie, she withdrew from the film industry and spent most of her time in Paris, where she had moved decades earlier. She died in Paris July 26, 2020, at the age of 104. Mickey Coon After Mickey Coon's passing, we can confirm that every Gone with the Wind cast member has now died. Mickey was born September 21, 1932, in Waukegan, Illinois. His family moved to L.A. for a better life during the Great Depression. He began his career as a child actor, appearing in feature films, and his parents decided he should attend acting school to perfect his craft. They felt he had a great future in the industry. And boy, were they right. 1939, often considered one of the best years for Hollywood, was also the year Mickey became a huge star, despite only being seven. He was cast in the film Juarez, which launched him to stardom. Later that year, he played Bo Wilkes in Gone with the Wind, and this brought him even more attention. Years later, when he became an adult, he acted in A Streetcar Named Desire, in which he was reunited with his Gone with the Wind co-star, Vivian Lee. But he took a hiatus from film after A Streetcar Named Desire was released. He joined the U.S. Navy and worked as an electrician for four years with them. Upon leaving, he wanted to join acting again. He got two small roles in feature films and managed to snag a few roles on episodes of Alfred Hitchcock Presents, all released in 1957. But it seems his hiatus in the Navy was enough to put an end to his stardom. He continued to get offers after his work on Alfred Hitchcock Presents, but he wasn't happy with them. He enjoyed the experience of working on TV, but preferred film. And the film offers were drying up, so he decided to leave show business altogether. He worked for American Airlines for much of the remainder of his adult life, working in various administrative positions. He occasionally would show up to film festivals that showcased his films. He never hesitated to discuss his career, and especially his experience working on Gone with the Wind. He died in a hospice facility November 20th, 2022, in Naples, Florida. He was 90. Now it's time to hear from you. Who is your favorite character from Gone with the Wind? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Facts First as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the Join button. By becoming a paid member of Facts First, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So if you want exclusive content from Facts First or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the join button to get started for just $4.99. There are hours of members only videos waiting for you with new videos added every month. And we're actively working on bringing even more features to help fans like you connect with other members and get more of your favorite content. Just click join and we'll see you inside the membership tab.